Here we go, folks. And basically what you're going to see is what I've got footage lined up. And I believe that the, if you see, I've got three sets of windows open here. And basically if you watch, because each one of these windows I'm going to pop into, we have our black. To me, it seems to be a black. Uh, it's not exactly you wouldn't, because since we, there's colorization. Okay. But no matter what, it just basically shows up as black because it's darker. So this thing could be anything of the dark color spectrum, okay? So you look up any color spectrum, there's lots of different colors in this spectrum of light, just like there is almost an infinite amount of channels in the electrical, yes, in the communications grid, okay? Because if you look up our military, yes, we have learned to fold the spectrum over infinite amount of times. So the idea that uh, that's somewhat of a, uh, but at the same time, you get to go see what the contractors are selling the United States Navy, but the military owns it. So the idea that that spectrum in the government, so the idea that only certain are allowed to use it and so forth and so on. So now, in our color spectrum, this could be anything dark color that you can imagine. Okay, a dark green, it could be a dark blue, it could be a dark anything. No matter what, you're going to see this object right there, which is basically a star, because we're going to zoom in on it. I'm just showing you it's there. So if you look at basically the my cursor bar here on each one of these pages, and what it is, is a dark star or a planet. And this is the best footage, and I believe I have this from the, uh, we'll just go over real fast. Always watch on full screen. Now this is the one on the 21st where I showed you basically, you're going to see that basically they are blocking out, you see. But then again, like I say, it's just basically a way to communicate to other astronomers so that they can basically communicate and then basically go, that they, okay, and then they can communicate on their private phone calls, emails, texts, or something like that. Okay, this is what I'm looking at. And this telescope can be looking at this telescope in a certain part of the world at a certain, because that's what they do. They break the, them up into all kinds of, there's private ast astronomical studies now as you see here there was getting blocked out there but it's not the dark object that's getting blocked on that day because as you can see we're up here and we found our dark object again if you can see it right there so this this footage from the 21st is the best because what you can do is we'll come in and we're going to zoom because you can it doesn't look it looks like optical illusion that basically that, that the dark star is in front of that star that I'm pointing at right there but in a few minutes I'm going to zoom in and you'll see that the actual fast one, there's our object again here. It's a dark, dark star is pretty much what I'm calling it. Uh, we could call it a dark comet, I guess, if someone wants, but it's so large that the idea that, I mean, it's something in, in the distance that it's out, it's really hard to say that it's even, if even possibly, is it smaller than Jupiter? Quite possibly. Odds, proportional and that's what it comes down to. It all comes down to physics and fit, figuring out. Uh, there is some stars that, uh, i.e., it's a German telescope that's studying it, and basically they keep on coming up. It's very hard to get certain, unless you can get a laser on something, and then uh, be able to uh, measure off your off your proportional integral derivatives. It's just basically like some communications that basically that I'm only privy to that basically every once in a while you worry about the idea of the safety of your whole country and then make sure that the idea that our government and our military only has control of that spectrum or this or that. So it all comes down to timing, proportional integral derivatives, and basically physics, physics there's a little bit of actual uh, secrets of the state. So the idea that uh, there's certain things that basically I don't want anybody else to know besides our government and our military. So, there is, there does become parameters in, in being a physicist. Whether someone, I'm not, I just basically, I'm a unlicensed physicist, let's put it that way. I'm not codified or this, that. I'm not, I don't have any puppet strings on me. I'm not controlled. Okay. So, the actual factual, we have our object again right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at it basically from looking at it at the 21st, because what we do is we have that star once again, 
And I just take my 15 minutes because basically every video is, is to keep down. Cause, but more than likely, I'm not going to come back to this in the future. I'll probably just go, well, there's our dark little object when we're watching it. Because what, what it is, is you're going to figure out that, that the actual factual from looking from the 21st, which is this footage here, because that's the one with the star, that it, that it goes behind, okay? I'm going to prove that before the video is over. This is where it's out in front and away from that star, as you see there. And real quick, I can go up to, and also, since we'll look at the date and stuff like that, you'll see that we're very busy. And I do believe this is the freshest footage. I think this is going to be the 23rd. As you see the magneticals, we've got a lot more hanging around in our unit, our solar system. Our solar system. We've got a lot more hanging around in our solar system than what any organization is going to ever tell you. As IE right there, we have a magnetical. And what's, what helps to find these magneticals, you see, you'll find the magneticals dangling down like a Christmas tree ornament hanging or a piece of hair straight strung tight like a rope and you find them at the top of the deal and then what you do is like what I can do is go over here to this third one which is not Jupiter or Earth and basically Jupiter and Earth were the, the bright white ones to the right and then you follow down like this with your borderline and you'll end up finding your planet which is right there and which is not going to be, uh, that is not Mercury or Venus, okay? And it's not Neptune, Pluto, or Uranus. And there's your magnetical line of it. And as you see, the gap that it, that it does, the travel from where it's at to the, the border. So then you can come down on that, and you'll know that basically you get to your bright little planet. And there it is. And actually, I pointed wrong to begin with because there it is right there okay now if I move right you'll realize that yep now that is not Mercury Mars Jupiter the only possibility that you could possibly say Saturn but then what we've got no matter what is if I I'll pop out at 400 real fast or just I actually You'll see, you, you can see with your own eyes when I say that I was going to pop out at this or that, I popped out at 200. So we're here on the 22nd. This really should be Saturn because Saturn is the largest thing that we know of. And it's farther away, but see, see, things look bigger on the satellite telescope. So the idea that this really might not be Saturn. Uh, and we have to start, you got to start watching JPL. And I don't think I'm going to, because with me babbling, I'm not going to have enough time to go to JPL and pull it up. Might do that in the next video. And as you see, you have that planet right there that I'm pointing at, because we're at 200, and then I'll pop back up to 999. And then we got to get back to t talking about our uh, big black star, or comet, or whatever it is, and it's moving through. So we swing over real fast, and that's it. And then basically, you know, you've seen your magnetical lines of Earth and Jupiter there. And then you go up, and you're going to see this magnetical line here. And... Just basically, I'm wasting tape time by repeating it and going down real fast, and then you just go down and find it again with your borderline, like that. And there, you got your quadrant, and you got... You basically pick up your quadrants, and you can go find all these. As we got another magnetical there, and we go over, and you just basically... What, what really helped us out was basically... Uh, no one did it for us, okay? Nobody helped us out at NASA. They had to do what they had to do, and then basically since what they're wanting to find and look at, then we end up finding other things because they rotate the satellite. So, uh, there's your planet down here, okay? And basically the magnetical to it, right straight up, bam, there it is right there. That's your magnetical line to it. Okay, so let's get on our star real fast here with hopefully not, and then basically we're at 999 already. We're going to remember, I can't point, but we know we got this star that we're working off of because basically it looks like when we're at this resolution, it looks like that black star is in front of that star. Well, it's not. And we'll pull up the... Well, I'm going to save some tape time. So we just keep it in view, and we zoom in, and you can't miss it. It's right there by the star in the right-hand corner. So I got good positioning. So we zoom, and then basically I'll pace towards it, and there's our black star. Now, I can't point. Remember, the only thing I can even really kind of point with is I can get the wooden handle, and there's the wooden handle pretty much right in front of it, okay? And as you can see, as we're at this now, that you can see that basically you start to realize that base 
actual to your eyes factual that that is basically popping up behind that star. And it really doesn't look that, that the, it's an optical illusion and then you got to try to go down and slow it down. But as you can see here at that resolution, it basically is behind the, the bright luminosity star, whichever star that that is. And as you see, even we get it pumped up more. And then that is our black star. I kind of hold it steady. I can't really hold it steady too much because when I go to get my magnifier and I'm going to waste too much time. But as you can see right there, the handle's just above the black star. And it is moving basically counterclockwise like our planets do. And it is moving out because when we get into the freshest footage that I have here, uh, if I could be at the wrong date, let's pop out real fast in sizes. The 23rd, this is the freshest footage I've got. And as you can see, as we're leaving there, that, that, that it was basically, and we'll pump in at 400, and we'll get over to the Jupiter... And then we'll try to get up here and find our star again. I'll, I might. And there it is, our black object. Okay. Then we pump in more. I'll get save tape time. And basically, there you go. And we'll pump that. We're at 9.99. So, and as you can see here, this is a different. See, this is the 23rd. So we're starting to see that it basically could be in front of this star. But remember, the other star that was pretty much that it was behind was basically, I believe, since I'm pointing at that one there, it probably should have been because that was the brightest one that was on the footage. Just back up the video. Now remember, so A and B are in our solar system, okay? Now they can see outside our solar system also. But the idea to keep in mind high proportional integral derivatives that that planet right there, and I go up to the magnetical line on it, is right up there, squared over, and actual factual, we have a lot more in our solar system than what they tell us about, i.e. right there, you see, and then up to its magnetical line, and there it is right there, you can't miss it right there. So that's how you study this, and you can always keep it to proportional integral derivatives, okay? It's all derivatives. So we're pumped up on, our, on the 23rd here, which is our freshest footage, and then we're going to go in with the magnifier, and we'll be able to see and it pretty much looks like it's in front but we'll know when we get down and I don't know we might not know until we get some footage from the 24th now and it's starting to look like basically that it could be going behind it but as you see remember I can't point when I'm but you can see it in the left hand corner here of the screen as it gets up to the star I'm beginning to believe that it's behind that star also especially since that star would be closer to the camera because, and then it freezes, which actually helps us out, and there's more than one star there. So it'll be interesting to see if we see it go between those two stars. So, anyway, lots of, there's an infinite amount of objects in space, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Because space is infinite, star counts are infinite. They always say, how many stars? NASA doesn't know how many stars are in space. It's infinite. You might as well just look at it that way. Space is infinite, okay? And there's a little bit of things that Einstein was wrong on, basically black holes. Uh, but he did know about it because he knew that he called it basically like what we're doing with the collider. He called it spooky. Okay. So proportional integral derivatives is an engineer's and physicist's and electrician's uh, tools of the trade. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to teach you that much. Basically, I keep it down to dumbness, the idea of looking with your eyes and seeing actual factual, because otherwise, everybody tries to think that they're smarter than somebody else. You see, I don't care how fast you can do a math problem. So, if I ever need you for a calculator and we have electrical problems that I can't use a calculator, I'll, I'll hire you or feed you. So, Anyway, we've got lots of objects and basically wanted to show this dark star with you. And we'll get some better looks at it in the future. And here I'll try to go ahead and get us in on it. I'm pretty sure there's it, there it is. And then we'll keep coming in on it. And I'll get you as big a zoom as we can on it. The left hand lower corner right now.